Good morning, blessed people. Good morning to everyone. It is the early morning of the hour. The birds singing and flying and the, all the beautiful creatures moving about on the earth. We have a cool air of the day. May our heart receptive to the word of God. May we all prepare ourselves to humble before God and worship Him with spirit and truth. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 and 8 Therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you truly are unleavened for indeed Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Amen. What a striking scripture. What a powerful explanation. What a excellent spirit that encourages that we need to assemble as people of God. We know the word purge simply means cleansing, cleaning. Today, we see because of the COVID-19, the coronavirus, we purge everything by spraying sanitizers. We clean it, everything, so that the virus may not come and sit over there. Here, the Holy Spirit is telling that our heart need to be purged out. I have seen many times in the villages, the old ladies when they are washing their clothes, the river band or in the pool of water, they use soap and rinse the cloth many times and then finally they twist and, and make the cloth dry so that all the water may go out. They crush it so hard, thereby there is no water remaining there on the washed cloth. Purged out means just clean out, press it down and get everything dirt out of it. So the, the word of God says purge out because our soul is a old lump having leaven things in our life. You know, the lump is prepared of flour. Naturally, after six hours or more, the lump will be spoiled by the yeast. It will become leaven. It's natural. Naturally, it, it changes into a different formal of chemical. Now, in a symbolic way, purge out the old lump. Here, what kind of leaven lump is there in our heart? There are two things mentioned here, malice and wickedness. Malice, it is an inner character. There is nobody here without malice. We have always some kind of a evil things in our heart. It comes in our eyes. It comes in our flesh. It comes in our heart. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, it's a component of 
malice the second thing wickedness wickedness is something that you do outward of your own self and body you do it outside on your life you do some harm some iniquities to your neighbor or to the society so what he says clean your heart from the kind of malice and the wickedness clean it all before you take the true passover which is our lord jesus christ being sacrificed for our sin you see in the old testament god has given a passover to the children of israel when they were in egypt as a slaves they were there had a very hard life bitter life about 430 years book of exodus chapter 12 verse 40 says after 430 years israelites were left egypt by the mercy and the grace of god and above all the passover was the celebration on that day passover it is a one year old lamb without blemish or spot one year old very young old lamb they need to kill the lamb and take the blood and apply it on their door post exodus chapter 12 verse 7 and also they need to eat that exodus chapter 12 verse 8 and this is a kind of a celebration for them on that particular day israel was freed from their slavery and they started marching towards canaan so the day when they left egypt that's called called that book exodus means going out or get out passover is a feast god has given this passover for each of the family member of israel it's only for the people of israel have covenant with god it's only for the people who are born through abraham isaac and jacob this passover this passover to give them the very true meaning why they are observing the passover that god has granted to them according to the book of exodus chapter 12 verse 26 that's the meaning the true meaning of the passover they are leaving they left they had an exodus from the land of egypt so you need to understand the first passover is kind of a shadow for god's children that they need to leave from sin they need to leave from death they need to leave from all kind of malice and wickedness that's the old testament passover now when christ came he has instituted a new passover when you look at the book of first corinthian mostly the preachers always preach uh, lessons and show references only from first corinthian chapter 11 mostly they deal from chapter 11 only when you read carefully apostle paul inspired and he started writing about the new passover in the book of first corinthians chapter 5 chapter 10 chapter 11 so in the entire book at least three times in three different places apostle paul is trying to tell you that how you should observe the new passover now the new passover has to be observed for the whole world community 
the old passover only for the children of israel that's the difference the old passover basically a little lamb have no blemish or spot but the new passover for the entire world for every mankind that jesus christ become the true lamb of god gospel according to john chapter 1 verse 29 and also verse 36 christ is the true lamb of god the true lamb of god is without blemish spot this is a precious blood first peter chapter 1 verse 19 So when you read 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 you will be really thrilled to know the fact that Christ blood was far superior than any blood on this face of the earth So Jesus Christ is called the true lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world Now when we come into the New Testament Christ being called the true lamb of God and his new covenant it is called the new passover so we observe passover today the word passover in the hebrew language pascha but i'm so glad in tamil language the word passover exactly translated pascha maybe in telugu also so we brought that word from hebrew to tamil exactly pascha this is the exact word in the hebrew but the meaning of the word pascha is pass over means you just go out free to walk now this new passover has to be celebrated not just like a old testament passover here you need to put your heart here you need to take god's truth in your life the old testament passover simply they kill that animal and apply the blood on the door post and they burned it in the fire with unleavened bread they ate it but the new testament passover that every one who observes the feast from his heart he must be sincere there is a word you can see in first corinthian chapter 5 verse 8 sincerity sincerity means with all obedience with all cleanness with all openness sincere means truthful that you need to examine yourself that's the reason In First Corinthians chapter eleven, we read, "Examine yourself before you take the Lord's supper. Check your life, particularly about the malice and wickedness and all kind of the evil characters in our life." The New Testament Passover, we need to observe, not like a old lump of leaf and one, but this is a new lump of flour. unleavened unleavened when you put it in your mouth you won't find any anything to spit out but leaven one will make you not happy on your tongue you have to spit out it's very very but difficult to taste that so the bible says you need to take the new lump the unleavened bread that is with sincerity and truth what is the truth truth is that which agrees with god always truth agrees with god that is truth jesus said i am the truth if you know the truth the truth will set you free john chapter 8 verse 32 therefore you need to take the new passover with a sincerity 
and truth. The second thing, in the book of Corinthians chapter 10, Apostle Paul, he speaks some different things. When you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20, Apostle Paul says, you cannot take this Lord's Supper on the demon's altar and fellowship with the drink. You see, in, in our own country, among the idolaters, they have different kinds of food sacrificed unto their own God. Every religion has some kind of things in the temple. They call it prasad. Now, what the Holy Spirit says, those prasad, those food offered on the demon's altar, idol's altar, you cannot fellowship with that. You cannot have any relationship with that. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 says, not with the demon's altar and no fellowship with the drink. And uh, also, you cannot think Lord's Supper as a family meal. Because in a normal way, we take three different meals every day. These meals that you can also have some kind of a bread. Mostly they are leavened one. We take bread, bun, cakes, all kind of food. Those food are not called as Passover. Passover meal is dedicated. It is a sacrament. It is a new covenant. This is for a spiritual reason. Whereas at home, when you eat food on your table, that's for your stomach. Therefore, the Holy Spirit says, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, Lord's Supper not for hunger. When you are hunger, you go and eat at home. But when you come to church, you are eating the new Passover for your soul. You are observing it with the sincerity and also according to the truth. Because the truth himself says that we need to prepare the unleavened bread the unleavened wine according to Christ's teaching. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, it is also called New Covenant, Old Covenant, Old Testament, dedicated by the blood of the Lamb. Whereas the New Testament being dedicated by the blood, the superior blood which saves man's soul by the blood of Jesus Christ. According to Hebrew chapter 9 verse 22, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So from the beginning, the day one when Adam was created to the end of this world, God uses blood as a means to forgive our sin. So God uses Christ's blood to forgive our sin and the same blood become a covenant between you and God. So, when you come to the communion, remember, this is a covenant. Indian women, when they were married, the husband tie a thread of yellow cord or a thread with a pendulum of piece of gold. The woman carries on her neck till her death. Even she can carry after her husband's death also for seven days. For the days of purifying. A Indian woman may give out everything, but not a thali. Thali is the sacred thread, the yellow one, yellow thread, which she carries till her husband dies on her neck. That's a covenant. But that covenant ends between 20 to 40 years time because man cannot live beyond 80 years on average. When husband dies, she becomes a widow, therefore she is free from the covenant. But the covenant what you are taking today with the sincerity and truth, this is an everlasting covenant. 
as a Christian, you can be proud of this new covenant. If someone asks you why you are a Christian, or someone asks you, yesterday you may be a Christian, today you become an Hindu again, you be a Buddhist tomorrow, you cannot change your religion like anything because you made and God came in in your life giving you this new covenant as eternal one. This is a new covenant. Therefore, you need to be careful in observing the true meaning of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper also called, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the new Passover. Whenever you remember that word Passover, it clears your mind, you are freed from sin to walk towards eternity. Whenever you hear the word Passover, you are free to walk to please God in your life. That will save you. Therefore, Christians are assembled, gathered together on the first day of the week to do and observe the new Passover. I would like to ask you to open your New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink in this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In this one passage, can you see a timeline? Till he comes, it shows the time. As often as it shows the time. According to the Old Testament Passover, they used to observe once in a year, that too in a midnight. Once in a year, in a midnight only. Whereas, the Christian observance of the new Passover, that is the Lord's table, when we need to observe, the Bible says, as often as you eat, as often. So, there is a, a difference between the timeline there. It's not talking about as often means one year. It must be less than one year, less than one month. Therefore, according to the apostolic teaching, Acts chapter 2 verse 42, Acts chapter 20 verse 7, the earlier Christians, they observed the Lord's Supper the first day of the week. On the first day of the week. Because on the first day of the week, the Lord was risen from the grave. Therefore, a Christian have a duty to eat on this unleavened bread and unleavened drink then go about and proclaim to tell people with a great joy that he is coming soon. He is returning. The Lord is coming soon. Therefore, you need to go and invite people come to this meal, come to this table, come to this covenant. With the earnest spirit, you need to preach the gospel of Christ that Christ died for the sins of man. Therefore, taking Lord's Supper is the only purpose when you consider why we gather together on Sunday, why we meet on Sunday, because in order to remember the broken body of Jesus Christ and remember the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So, the broken body and the shed blood are the cause and which is a sacrament, which is the holy thing that we take it with all fear and humility, giving praise to God that he set us free by taking this communion to pleasing him. When you come before the new Passover, you are doing two things. This is the important things. One is, you remember Christ's death. 
Number two, you proclaim Christ's return. These are the very essentials of the New Testament. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. If you read carefully, there are two things you are doing. When you come before the sacred Passover, you remember Christ's death. You remember Christ's death. Deeply you are moved in your heart that Christ died for you. Remembering his death is part of the Passover, number one. Number two, you have a duty, you have an obligation that you need to go out to the world and proclaim that Christ is coming soon. Can you see that? Often time we may come before the Lord's Supper and take it and remember that he has died for us. We remember truly. But we do not proclaim his coming. His coming at any time. His return is there in the future, any time. So there are two reasons when we gather together before the Lord's Supper. One is to remember Christ's death Number two, to proclaim to the world his return. Christ is coming as a righteous judge to judge everyone according to John chapter 12 verse 48. He's going to judge according to the New Testament that every character of your life. God is going to judge everyone in this world. Therefore, my dear friends and brothers and sisters, this morning, it's a great time that we are gathered together to observe the sacred new Passover that set us free from sin to walk towards eternity. May God bless this message and help you to understand so that you may behave and live with a heart of sincerity and keep the truth in your life. God bless you all. As we know how to observe these all things, everything to Christ's mind, and we know that everyone should take this Lord's Supper after taking baptism. That is one of commandments of our Jesus Christ that we should do. And now, this time to take the Lord's Supper, we examine our Jesus Christ, how He died for us, and He give us our, for us a good life. Let's let's read one scripture, First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-four. When He had given thanks, He broke it and said. Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said that, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in the blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us have a word of prayer. God our Father who art in heaven, we come before your throne of grace. We bow down and humbly seek your grace and truth. Lord, we thank you. You are so much kind to our life. You are wings being covered on our life every day when we see the tragedy of hundreds and thousands go to hospital and die. Thank you, Father, for every good things that you granted in our life. Thank you, Father, for our good families, even though they are far away. Thank you, Father, they are protected. Thank you, Father, for the family of God around the world who observe the new Passover with all sincerity and truth. 
Father, we thank you for this first day of the week. We thank you, Father, that we are able to come before you at this early hour of the day. Father God, be gracious upon us. And I pray that you may grant us good gifts according to our faith and our need. If anybody is sick or troubled in their heart, and I pray, Father, grant them peace and good health. And I pray, Father, those who are going to listen this lesson may also receive the same freedom from sin and slavery of life that they may march out towards the eternity. May this Lord Supper be a proof that Christ's body was truly broken and his blood truly shed for the remission of our sin. Father, please accept our prayer and our prizes to your glory and honor. And I pray these things in the very faithful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. திருமறை நேரம் ஐம்பத்தி எட்டு சர்ச் திரு குமர நகர் சென்னை ஆறு லட்சத்தி எண்பத்தி இரண்டு தொலைபேசி எண் பூஜ்ஜியம் நான்கு நான்கு இரண்டு ஐந்து ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் எட்டு எட்டு இரண்டு செல்போன் ஒன்பது மூன்று எட்டு ஐந்து ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் எட்டு இரண்டு